It's Calgary's podcast on the Canada's Podcast Network. Hi, it's Bonnie LG. Welcome to Calgary's podcast. Today I'm with Connor Curran. Connor is one of the co-owners of Local Laundry, a Canadian-made garments company that uses clothing as a vehicle to build community. Connor started Local Laundry four years ago after Googling how to start a t-shirt company and watching a YouTube video. Now Connor works on Local Laundry full-time with a commitment to donate over $1 million to local charities across Canada. Local Laundry can be found in over 20 stores across the country and is heralding the importance of supporting Canadian manufacturing. So Connor, welcome. Thanks for being with us here today. My pleasure. Thanks so much for, for having me on the show. Looking forward to it. Well, why don't we jump right in and, and you can tell our listeners a little bit about how you actually got started and uh, what drove you to become, a, I guess we would say, a social entrepreneur. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. So I'd started Local Laundry back in 2015. My wife and I were living in Sweden uh, and I was studying for my MBA at the time. And I really wanted something that really represented Calgary and not just, you know, an I Heart Calgary shirt or a shirt with a character on it, something that I thought really represented me and, and, and the people that made up this great city. So I kind of just did what every other idiot millennial does, and I Google search how to make a t-shirt company. Uh, and then from there, I watch a YouTube video. And, and within, you know, uh, an hour or two, a day or two, I had, um, had an online t-shirt company up, up and running. And I thought this was really great, but I wanted it to be something a little bit more. You know, there's so many t-shirt companies out there. And there's so many brands that kind of just take um, city pride or regional pride and, and turn it into a brand. And I, I didn't want to just be cashing in, and cashing in on you know this whole hashtag YYC thing. I wanted, I wanted it to be something that really gave back and had a positive impact in the community. And I, ultimately, I wanted a, a way to connect with other great Calgarians and other people that were doing their part to make a positive impact on this community. So it, it kind of developed in a few different ways. I mean, the first thing that was really baked in was donating 10% of profits back to local charities that our customers helped choose. And that was the first and foremost, and that was great. Uh, and we would donate, you know, a couple hundred bucks here, a couple hundred bucks there and get customer feedback. And that was great. But it, it, we quickly realized that donating money is not the only way that you can give back and build community. So we started to develop pillars of community and how in different ways that we can build community. So now we have five pillars of community. One of them is of course, representing where you come from, being proud of the fact that you're from Calgary, or we also have a Canada line and representing Canada as a whole. Uh, the second is by donating, of course, or local profits back to local charities. And then our third is by sharing the stories from those in the community that are creating that positive impact. Whether musicians, nonprofits, uh, artists, other local businesses that are doing powerful community building. Uh, the fourth is by collaborating with those and actually uh, finding organizations that share values and finding ways to, to, to work together to, to give back. And, and then our fifth and final pillar of community building is by only supporting Canadian manufacturing in an effort to support a diverse Canadian economy. So those are just kind of a few ways that over time our community building efforts grew and evolved to, to what it is today. And I'm sure we'll probably add a few more pillars, pillars of community along the way, but um, yeah, yeah, we've been going strong for about four and a half years now and I've loved every, every minute of it. Well, and I'm interested to know, because that is such a, a, rebo, a robust and, and different business model, but what were you doing before you started Local Laundry? Have you always been an entrepreneur? Has that always been in your blood? It's definitely been in the blood. My parents moved to Canada from Ireland in the 70s, and they opened a pub about 22 years ago here in Calgary. Uh, one of the first uh, Irish pubs here in Calgary, one of the only Irish owned pubs in, in Calgary and um, so it's always kind of been in my blood but I, I, to be honest I never thought I was quite smart enough to be a business owner I thought you had to be really smart know everything know everything about marketing finance business permits taxes and I was always really scared to start a business because I never thought I knew enough and I never thought I was quite smart enough so I did what every other everyone else does in the city I, I, I thought I'd chase the money go into oil and gas and and you know well, we know where we know how that's turned out, right? <laughs> yeah, we know where that leads us. So I was one of the first first of my friend group to get laid off. I worked for a company for two years, got laid off, and then I was like, "Wow, okay." Well, I don't think oil and gas is the answer. So I decided to move with my wife to Sweden to study, to upgrade, you know, get my MBA. And it was there that I really took a hard look at myself and said, "What is it that I want to do that 
that would make me happy. Um, and and I, I realized that it was a small business, the idea of a small business that my parents had done it, they had built a life for themselves, but they had always kind of been able to find a way to weave that's like doing good while creating and growing a business. You know, they, if you walk into their pub at any given time, they probably have you know, anywhere from 10 to 12 different nationalities. They're a big supporter of newcomers to Canadians, uh, newcomers to Canada since they were new Canadians themselves. They really help get people established here, bring people over, bring their families over and that kind of thing. And so they were able to use this business as a way to, to kind of do good. And so I really want to do something similar. So I took a deep, hard look. And I said, you know what? I really want to own a business. I really want to be an entrepreneur, but I want to do something that can give back and, and do some good at the same time. Well, one of the things that I love about Local Laundry is you really are shining the spotlight on Calgary. Yeah. And as we know, it's been a rough few years here in the city. So can you share with our listeners who really are from around the world, like in your opinion, even in the, the hard times, what are some of the benefits of doing business in Calgary? Oh man, I think Calgary is the greatest place in the world. I really do. My, my wife, she's from Ontario. And when we got married, I said, uh, if we're going to get married, we're not going to live anywhere else but Calgary. You have to live in Calgary. Thankfully, she agreed to it. Now she's grown to come love it. Uh, the, the interesting thing about Calgary, I find it, and, and it was Mike Morrison that kind of explained this to me. Mike Morrison is, is, is a great local influencer here in yes, Calgary. Yes, we've he's, had him on the show. He is phenomenal. And he, yeah. he said something to me. You know, He's from out east, and he said, the thing about Calgarians is no one is from here. No one's from here. Everyone's from somewhere else. And, and uh, at first, I was like, oh, okay, well, what does that have to do with anything? He's like, if you go to places like Toronto or Vancouver, where they've families have been there for generations, they have their friend circle of friends, they have their cliques, that clicks, they have their niches. No one really wants to talk to anyone or meet anyone new. We're in Calgary because everyone is from somewhere else. Everyone knows what it feels like to be that new kid at school, to be that new person in the office, to not know very many people, to not know what's going on. So everyone is super friendly. Everyone. I find just really wants to help each other out, you know, and we see that no more than, than in the entrepreneurial scene. I mean, that was one of my favorite things I'll start a business here was this, all of a sudden I had this community of like-minded individuals that wanted to build something, wanted to grow something, wanted to use it as a way to give back. And they, everyone was so eager and willing to kind of help each other, you know, whether you're a brewery or you make clothes or you make gelato, you know, everyone just wants to see everyone here succeed. When I, and I think that's very, very different from the likes of places like Toronto, Vancouver, where it's a little bit more cutthroat. Everyone's kind of stepping over each other to, to get where they need to go, where it's here. It's like, why, we, we all want the same thing. We all need to get to the same place. Why can't we help each other? grow and, and get there together which which i i think is is absolutely phenomenal and of course you know with all the things that have been happening over the last few years calgarians just just have this grittiness where it's just you know we're not going to stand around and complain for very very long we're going to get we're going to put our heads down we're going to get to work we're going to figure it out we're going to make it happen we're going to find the solutions to the problems and we're going to get out there get after it and, and make it happen which which i just love yeah, yeah, that's great. But when you flip it around, and, and we can't deny that it has been tough here too economically. So what have you bumped into in terms of challenges for doing, you know, starting a business here? Well, I think as a small business, uh, your costs are always higher. You are generally building and promoting a premium product that comes at a premium price, you know, whether you are making organic kombucha or you're making craft beer or Canadian made clothing, you know, you don't have the economy as a scale and you are not cutting corners. You're doing things the right way and, and slowly. Um, and that comes at a premium, you know, most of these small businesses that, that I'm, that we're like, like ourselves and other people that are here and building something, they're, they're a premium product, right? They sell something at a premium price. So for us example, um, we are making Canadian made garments and our garments are very expensive, right? But they're expensive for a reason, right? They're expensive because we ensure that our manufacturers are paying their workers Canadian living wage with benefits. They're adhering to Canadian labor and Canadian labor and environmental laws and standards and that's that's very expensive when larger companies can just you know um produce overseas for a fraction of the labor cost because who knows how those workers are getting treated and they're not contributing to a diverse economy and so that becomes difficult when you're trying to sell a product that's you know 90 dollars a sweater to a calgarian who's on a bit of hard times 
when they can go down to Walmart and get a sweater for 20, 30 bucks or even less. So we're really trying to promote the fact that, you know what, Calgarians, you know, while we're not in the best of times, we can't afford not to buy good clothes. We can't afford not to buy, you know, um, mm -hmm. cheap products because ultimately small business owners of Calgary, they're producing products that are, gonna, that are better for you. They're going to last a long time. And, with, and that, that's, I think, the biggest challenge is, is, is fighting that sort of notion of well, why should a garment cost this much money mm -hmm. uh, and fighting that, that, that habit that we've gotten into that we're, we want a T-shirt for the cheapest amount of money possible. You know? Right, right, right. Well, it's very obvious you're a huge uh, supporter of the city, and I'm wondering if you can share with our listeners where do you go locally if you want to um, just get inspired? You're in a creative business, so yeah. where where do you go? Do you have a spot or two that's a favorite to just kind of rejuvenate and get refocused? Yeah, absolutely. There's there's so many great places. Um, what I typically do because I work from home, you can see my lovely home office, the local owner head local owner headquarters in my in my basement here. Um, I spend every Wednesday as my meeting day, and so if someone wants to meet meet with me, I say, you know, come meet me. I'm going to be at Calgary Heritage Roasting Co. Uh, in Ramsey. They're a brand new coffee uh, cafe that had just opened up in June, and it's in the old Simmons building. Everything's all exposed brick. They built tables the floor all by hand from old wood that they found there and it's a really inspiring place to see we're quite close with the two owners and to see you know those two guys who, who went through all sorts of struggles to get that cafe in place in that building you know that that's always inspiring to me um and and sim similarly when i look at other great brands like you know fiasco gelato um james james boucher um, the ceo there has been a big mentor to us anytime we need anything advice tips shoulder crown he's there for us you know he's got ten thousand things to do but he always takes the time to 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 spend with us you know and then you know for inspiration if we're feeling really out of shape or or, or need to get our sweat on we always look to our friends over at wow i see cycle i mean i just we were it was giving tuesday on tuesday and we went and volunteered with their crew down at the calgary food bank and i was chatting away with them and they i've asked them how much money have you guys raised you know for charity so far they have raised over seven hundred thousand dollars charities wow. i mean we're trying to get to a million we're you know about 40 fifty thousand dollars in and they've raised over seven hundred thousand dollars you know they have you want to talk about building community they've figured out how to build community and bring people together so i just you know anytime we're kind of feeling low or, or bad about ourselves and that happens a lot you know as as an entrepreneur i think most people know it. it's a roller coaster ride one day you think you're the smartest person in the world you know nothing can touch you and the next day you're just oh, i don't even start this thing what am I doing? And, you know, we all kind of get like that, but to, to have people, to have that network, the support group, the support system, the people like that and inspirations just literally around the corner, everywhere you look um, in this city. It's, it's so, it's so invigorating and I'm just so thankful to be a part of it. That's awesome. So where, where do you want to go with, with local laundry next? Like what's your vision for the, the future here? How long is this podcast? <laughs> I can talk about this all day long. This is, this is a great question. Um, so, you know, it, it, it's funny because we started Local Laundry as, like I said, just two idiots to Google search how to make a t-shirt company. I didn't know anything about e-commerce, wholesale, retail, certainly did not know anything about fashion. Still know very, know very little about fashion, but we, we came with the notion that we wanted to build community, we wanted to bring, bring people together, and we want clothing to be that vehicle. And specifically Canadian-made clothing, we've been... Canadian made for about a, just over a year and a half now, uh, getting close to two years and just learning so much about the garment industry, how clothing is actually made, how people buy and what Canadian made clothing actually means mm -hmm. and the effect that that can have on people, you know, not just the people that are buying it, but the people that are making it, the people that are involved. So we want to, we really want to be, like I said, and like I said in the introduction, we want to be heralds of the importance of Canadian made clothing, Canadian manufacturing as a whole. So what we want to do is we want to make garments with purpose we want to make clothing that, that actually matter that people just don't like oh here's a cool design or you know here's a, a, a black friday deal let's pick it up and you know for for really cheap we want to make clothing that that's that make people stop and think you know for so for a good example of that is our giving garments so at any given time at any shelter in canada the five most giving uh the five most in-demand items for donations are toques socks mittens towels and underwear 
Mm-hmm. And this is something that you can never have enough donations. The clients are always in need of. And so we decided that we wanted to help. So we introduced the giving garments, which is um, for our toques. Every toque that we sell, we donate one to a homeless organization. Every pair of socks that we sell, we donate one to a homeless organization. Every towel that we sell, we donate one mm. to a homeless organization. So we want to get to the point where we introduce underwear into the, that collection. We want to get to the point where we introduce mittens into that collection. Um, and, and, and we want to talk about, you know, the, the way that clothing used to be. When my wife goes home to Ontario, her favorite thing to wear is her dad's old root study from the 70s. And that thing is so soft. It's got no holes in it because Roots used to make all their stuff here in Canada. They used to make quality clothing here in this country. They've since, they've since went offshore, overseas, and, and their stuff isn't the same quality. But my wife's favorite sweater is this 50-year-old hoodie. And we want to make clothing that comes with a generational guarantee that you will be giving this to your children and to your children's children guaranteed. We want to be heralding the fact that, you know, we should be buying letter and buying less and buying better. We should be shrinking our closets. We should be investing in our, in our wardrobes and we should be buying clothing that's going to last. That's quality that we're going to give, give to our children, you know? Um, so that's, that's just, that's just some of the stuff that we're working on, you know, working with more sustainable materials. We just introduced our bamboo collection. Bamboo is is super sustainable. It uses, you know, a 10th of the water that cotton does. It, um, it grows like a weed. It's super soft. It's functional, naturally antimicrobial, you know, a lot more sustainable than recycled materials. And so we want to work with stuff like that. Our, Our dream would be one day that we can work with local hemp mills you know clothing used to be made out of hemp a like hundred years ago hemp is one of the most durable materials known to man um, because cotton doesn't grow here in Canada so if we can work with a hemp mill that actually grows hemp in Canada and make a sweater out of that so that we would have a sweater that was grown here and made here and it lasted a hundred years like that is our dream so I, I could go on for days and days by it just gets us so excited that that we made the switch to Canadian made we see the importance of it and how we we get to share this with people we get to tell people you know and I, I just hope that people are excited as I am you know and I still don't see myself as a fashion designer I don't see mm-hmm. myself in the fashion world I you know we really see ourselves as community builders and we just think that there's such big opportunity with clothing to kind of share that story and get people excited about it you know yeah absolutely absolutely well let's talk a little bit more personally um here for a few minutes so can you share with me what is the greatest piece of advice that you've been given or one that you've really used as a touch point as you've built your business yeah i think um well one of the greatest pieces of advice um that i've been given was you know don't ever forget where you came from um, don't ever, and, and this is something that James from Fiasco really, really preaches, and it really hits home. Don't ever forget where you came from. Don't forget the people that put you where you are. You know, um, I could talk to you all day about how I'm the smartest person in the world, and how I figured out this YYC design, but that doesn't mean anything if it wasn't for the people that, you know, really supported us in the get go. Believe it or not, Lululemon was a big, big part of our success in the get go. It was, uh, you know, a couple of Lululemon stores that really started to buy. Uh, our YYC stuff from the very get go, wearing it at their stores, and they kind of really helped legitimize us. And it was the friends that that bought right out of the gate, you know, mm-hmm. um, the retailers that took a chance on us, that that uh, saw something in us that maybe we didn't see it ourselves. So I think it's it's never forget where you come from. Uh, another great piece of advice that I, I learned, I read from a book, was that you know. Without relationships, you don't have a business. Relationships are absolutely key. And it's something that Dustin and I really, really take to heart. Dustin and I, my business partner, Dustin Paisley, you know, we kind of took a day one day. We're like, what are we good at? What are we good at? We're not accountants. We're not designers. We're not clothing, you know, fashionists. What are we good at? And we thought, you know, what we're good at is really fostering relationships. Everyone from our lawyer to our manufacturer to our retailers to our customers our team we really genuinely care about everyone that interacts with us and the brand you know um, a great example of that is is our manufacturer you know the clothing you know printing and manufacturing is, is a ruthless game it's a tough game and we're by far one of our suppliers smallest clients they say we're the only client that says thank you mm-hmm. the only client that says thank you which is crazy because we they get they have, they have clients that are so demanding that, that that spend so much money that 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 require so much, and you know, 
I, as little things as, as saying thank you. And that shocked us because that's like, we say thank you like 10,000 times a day to, mm-hmm. to everyone involved. And we're the only ones that remember birthdays and, and send Christmas gifts and that kind of thing. And, and I just think without relationships, you don't have a business. Because yeah. it's, that's all business is. It's just, it's just an entity that's built on relationships and people that, I, you, you know, I think sometimes people can take customers for granted. You know, they can take your business relationships for granted. I just say never, ever, ever take a relationship for granted. Always do your best to nurture and foster them. And, and I even see it, you know, it, with my business relationship with Dustin. It's, I, sometimes I just check in with Dustin. How you doing? How you feeling? You know, are you? you hungry because Dustin eats all the time. So you just got to always make sure Dustin's fed, but you got to foster that relationship. Mm-hmm. You can never take anything for granted. And then in particular with your family, my wife is one of the biggest supporters of local water there is. And she's a big part of um, why I'm able to do this. And I have to make sure that I'm spending enough time with her and, you know, tending to her needs and that kind of thing. And, you know, the thing about a business is you can love a business all day long. But the business itself is never going to love you back. Yeah. You know, a business yeah. will never, is not capable of loving you back. The only people that are capable of loving you back uh, is the people that the business touches. So I'm very, very big on relationship. And the third and final uh, piece of advice, especially I get asked all the time about entrepreneurs that want to start a business. Now, what's some good advice to start a business? I just say, shut up and do it. Mm-hmm. Shut up and start a business. Start a podcast. Start painting. Start just start. I think so many people get caught up in I don't know if my idea is good. I'm not smart enough. I got to come up with a business plan, a marketing plan. It's by the time I've met so many people that have come up with the perfect plan, and then it's three years later and they still haven't started because they're still planning. You know, I started Local Laundry with a Google search and a YouTube video, and two days later I had a I had a website, and I thought that. I, when I initially, originally initially started, I wanted to do community t-shirts. I didn't even think about the YYC and the YYC was just kind of an afterthought. And if I had planned my business around making community t-shirts, I'd still be sitting on hundreds of community t-shirts. I couldn't give away, you know, but I started and I adapted and I learned, I made a ton of mistakes. We still make mistakes, you know, and that's the other thing is that people always look to entrepreneurs and think they're all so smart and everything, but the reality is we don't have a clue what we're doing, you know? And, and then the thing, the thing that brings me comfort is no one knows what they're doing. No, you know, we're all learning as we go. We're all just making it up. We're all yeah. just throwing spaghetti to the wall and seeing what sticks. And I think yeah. I, find, I take a lot of comfort in that fact that, you know, yeah. I'm going to get up every day. I'm going to give it my darndest. And I'm probably going to fall over and trip 10,000 times, but that's, that's part of the fun. It's part of the journey. And eventually I'm going to get up and, Maybe one step further than where I started, you know. Yeah, so. you just have to have the courage to start sometimes. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, stop talking about it. Just just start. Just start. Well, are you reading any books that you would recommend to our listeners? Oh, yeah, I got loads of books. I, I I find reading books really difficult. I love audio books. I love yep. driving and listening to books. Uh, so one, uh, two books that I kind of got on the go right now. Um, one book. Um, uh, that I'm reading is called Extreme Ownership by Jocko Wilkins. He's like this crazy ex Navy SEAL guy, and he just says, you know, what? everything that goes wrong in your life or your business, you have to own up and completely take ownership of. If, if you have a, a team member that works under you and they're not doing their job, stop trying to put the blame on them. Maybe you should start putting the blame on you. And what can you do to make sure that they're doing their job better? And that's, that's the kind of mentality that Dustin and I take, you know, we're never going to point fingers and say, this is someone else's fault. We always look at ourselves first and say, you know, mm-hmm. how could we have avoided this? What could we have done better and take over? Right. And then the, the second book that I'm reading is, is called Scaling Up, which is based on the Rockefeller Habits, um, which is, which is um, a really good book that, that, that focuses on three main, four main pillars, people's strategy execution and cash and that's been really really helpful particularly the cash part uh dustin he works for the bank i'm not very much a numbers guy um but just the idea of how important cash is in a business it is lifeline and most entrepreneurs are terrified of it you know it's not the part that they're passionate about it's not the sexy part of the business and most people you know would rather just dig their head into the creative part than, and never ever look at the bank account and it's so important and so dustin i really really Every day we look at cash. Every day we do cash flow analysis, you know, and and really make that the lifeblood of our business. And, and, and that's what we want to do. We want to be a profitable 
business right from the very get-go. So. Right, right. Those, those are just some of the books. Those are, and do you have any favorite podcasts? You mentioned you like driving, you know, when you're driving around, you like to listen to to books or? Yeah, I, I, I listen to quite quite a few podcasts. I'm like every other, you know, every other male in their late 20s, early 30s, love Joe Rogan. I mean, he's the king of yeah. podcasts. He always says such interesting people um, on, on his show. Another one I've been listening to recently, oh, Masters of Scale by Reed Hoffman. That's a great one, mm-hmm. um, you know, to have, how to learn how to scale up. And then, of course, you know, How I Built This by, um, by NPR. If you ever just like some of the biggest brands in the world, you know, it's comforting to fact that a lot of them never knew how they, you know, how they uh, – we're doing and that kind of thing. So those 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 are a few of my favorite ones. I I, I try to, to stay away from podcasts because I get so addicted to them. I get so into them. So and I try, I want to be reading and listening more. Uh, one thing that I'm really trying to do right now is uh, I'm a lover of languages. So any t- chance I get, I'm always trying to learn a new language. Um, I went to Turkey last year. I spent a couple months learning Turkish. Um, now I'm revisiting my Swedish. So instead of like listening to books or podcasts, I'm I'm trying to spend as much time learning languages because mm-hmm. I'm just I'm just addicted to languages and because because it allows me to get connected with more and more, more people who, yeah. who people are my real addiction to and I just want to meet so many people and I want to connect with people yeah. want to hear their stories and if I can do that through language and then yeah, that's, yeah. so that that's what I spend most of my my podcast listening time to right now. And uh, wh- where do you, where's your favorite spot in the world in terms of outside of Calgary, in terms of travel or where you'd like to go? Um, yeah, I, you know, it's going to maybe sound a little cliche. I, I, I've been very fortunate enough to travel a lot of different places in the world. I think two, two places would probably be my favorite. One is, you know, uh, back home in Ireland where my parents are from, just being home, being around my family, you know, being around you know, the the people there, the way life kind of is kind of slow there. You can kind of take your time, just relax. The green, the ocean, that kind of thing. I love being back home in Ireland. Um, but then the second is is you know other than Calgary, I think we are absolutely so spoiled just out of the mountains in our backyard. Mm-hmm. And I'm I'm not even that big of a hiker. I don't ski. I just love being in the mountains. I love driving through the mountains. You know, my wife and I love just staying in hotels there, just going for short little hikes. You know, and just kind of just being in awe presence of these, these these glorious mountains i think if you're ever having a bad day or you're going through some rough stuff just drive out to the mountains and go for a little walk it is so healing and it's just so lovely and we're so lucky to just live you know 45 minutes an hour away from the most beautiful places in the world mm-hmm. uh, one place my wife and i really want to go to is we really love to go to japan um just because it'd be so different and everything you know so different yeah. there and, and, and beautiful and the food and but I have to, I have to learn Japanese first. So <laughs> I, I would spend probably six months learning Japanese so I can learn how to speak to people. There. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. Well, um, tell us a little bit about, do you have any non-negotiable routines or um, ways that you either prefer to start or end your day? Yeah. So I was going to bring this up when you mentioned the book, another book um, I've been reading is Aubrey Marcus's book, Own Your Day. Mm-hmm. And I love it. I love it. And I'm a big, big person on how to start and end a day. One rule that I have with my wife um, is that there's no phones in bed. We're not allowed laptops in bed, no screens in bed. I'm really big on, you know, dimming the lights down, getting, getting myself ready for bed and, and putting the phone, you know, outside the room or far out of the room. So what I like to do then is how I wake up is we have um, this like Philips Hue light that is our alarm that, that brightens the whole room and it feels like natural sunrise. We have like four alarms going off everywhere and they're like placed in various parts around the room. So I have to like get up, walk around and turn them all off. And then from there, uh, the night before I, I make my wife, my um, lemon water, mm-hmm. take some lemon. And, and so throw that in you. Yeah, that helps wake you up. Um, shower and then i i'm a big fan of stretching it's like trying to touch i'm like the most I'm, I'm the biggest most inflexible guy you'll ever meet i'm far from dainty or delicate or or you know um coordinated and, but i love trying to touch your toes every day um, i also have another goal that one day i'd love to be able to do the splits like conor mcgregor um so i've always practiced and like stretch my legs as far as they can not yeah. very good at it um yeah and then i try to do a couple push-ups every day and that kind of thing 
but I'm big, big on morning routine. Yeah, no phones in bed, no, you know, I took off, I, I deleted all, like as much social media as I could off my phone, trying to get away from the phone. Um, yeah, I think I think people just need a little bit more more quiet time mm-hmm. in their lives. and protecting that eight hours of sleep, man, man, oh man, uh, that's a big thing that I've been focusing on in 2019 is protecting that seven eight hours of sleep. I think a yeah. lot of people think that that you know the, the hustle life, the entrepreneur life, you got to be work work working four in the morning, sending emails and three four hours sleep and guilty if you're not up at you know the crack of dawn and that kind of thing. But I'm like. I'm getting my sleep. I'm making sure I'm getting good sleep. Mm-hmm. I'm doing all that I can to, uh, yeah. Awesome. Good awesome. Sleep. Well, and you provide me with the perfect uh, segue for uh, our second last question here. And it's one sure. we ask in every podcast across the country because entrepreneurs are often so connected to technology. Mm. Um, this is a th- hypothetical question, but if you can imagine that uh, we were going to drop you off in a tro- at a tropical island, um, there is no technology allowed. There's no Wi-Fi connection. None of those things. Um, there is one phone booth. So when you're ready to be picked up, we will come and get you. Um, and and you can assume that you would have your basic needs net met. So it's not like Survivor. But you're there alone. And so the question for you, Connor, is how long do you think you would last before you would call for the boat to, to oh, come? Did I lose you? you? Um, hello? Oh, I got gotcha. you. Okay. So uh, no worries. I'll just start that question again, just so it's easier for our editors. So, mm-hmm. um, so if you could imagine that you were uh, dropped off on a tropical island and you would not have any ke- connectivity to technology, so there's no Wi-Fi or any of those things, there is a phone booth on the island, so when you're ready to be picked up, we will come and get you. Um, you're there alone, but your basic necessities would be met. So it's not like you have to live like Survivor Man or something like that. So the question is, how long do you think you would last, and what would you do while you're there? Oh man, that was a great question. That was a very great question. Well, I think I'd probably miss my wife, so I probably couldn't stay too long. I, I'm going crazy without her. Um, so I'd probably be, only be able to last maybe three, maybe five days a week max if the phone call did go through. And what I think I would do there is I'm, I'm just a big fan of just kind of being with my own thoughts. I'd probably walk the island, be in deep thought. You know, um, I tend to have these like what I call sh- shower thoughts where if I don't have any other distraction, I'm in the shower or sometimes I just go sit in the steam room. I just have these like wild thoughts because all I think about is local laundry and business. So I'd probably just be be thinking about life, how we can make business better. And I'd probably you know, take a stick in the sand and, and, and draw up all, all these these crazy wacky ideas that you know, I present to Dustin, my business partner. He'd probably think like, you're crazy. <laughs> these are terrible <laughs> ideas. <laughs> None of these will work. You know, so I, I really just, yeah, I, I'd be running around, walking around. I'd probably try and build something. I really like building stuff with my own hands and figuring things out, you know. Um, so I'd probably, yeah, walk, walk, build, and think. But yeah, right. I probably wouldn't be able to last more than three days without my wife. If my wife was there, we could stay there for like two weeks. Yeah. 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 Okay. Great answer. So is there anything else that you'd like to share with our listeners before we, we end our, our chat today? Um, yeah, I think, I, th- I think just the importance of checking your labels, you know, understanding where, you, where your clothing is coming from, where you, understanding where your products come from. Take a look around your, your house, your room, your office, and have a good hard think, you know, what is actually made here mm-hmm. and what is actually made overseas and, and just kind of looking through your buying habits and purchasing habits with through those lenses and knowing that it's up to you, it's up to you and me as consumers to really be voting with our wallets about what kind of world we want to support and what kind of economy and products and lifestyle we want to support. And I think, you know, understand the human element in the cost of a bargain. You know, if a t- t-shirt at the mall is five dollars what elements in place were put in place to make that t-shirt five dollars you know how were those workers treated how was the environment treated in producing right. it you know so i think uh, i just really encourage you and because i'm 
I'm to, as much to blame as anyone else. I mean, up to two years ago, I was just looking for the best deal and didn't care where something was made. And, and so I just really encourage you to check your labels, do a little bit of research and understand who's making your clothes, how they're making your clothes and um, you know, how you're supporting um, mm -hmm. or not supporting Great. the system. So how can our listeners either get in touch with you or find out more about uh, local laundry? Can you give us your, your online details so we can yeah. make sure people can find you? Yeah, absolutely. So people can find us at www.locallaundry.ca, at Local Laundry on Instagram and Twitter and LinkedIn. Um, yeah, we're at 25 stores across Canada. Marks is a, is a great retail partner in Calgary, Edmonton, and Victoria. Uh, below the belt in all the malls in Calgary. Some great local um, independent retailers like Miraculous Supply Co. in Kensington here in Calgary. Stealing Home, Liz and Lottie. Um, there's plenty of places that you can you can find us. Of course, we're going to be a market collective next weekend, December 13th, and again on uh, for that weekend, and then again on December 20th for that weekend. Um, so. Awesome. Anyone has any questions, feel free to fire us an email, Instagram, direct message. Always happy to help. Well, I have to tell you, Connie, your enthusiasm for doing business in Calgary is quite inspiring. I'm not sure that I've talked to someone who has so much energy about oh. all the benefits of uh, doing business here. So thank you so much for being a guest today and really enjoyed chatting with you. Oh, well, thank you. I, I appreciate the, the, the kind words and, and thank you for, for wanting to highlight us and, and supporting us as well. We're, yeah. we're, we're more than happy to be here. Well, truly keep up the great work. <laughs> we'll, do our, we'll do our best. Thank okay. you. Okay. All right. Thanks.